Good evening and salutations, my YNR fans. Before I get started, I want to sit there and thank everyone for their patience and their and their understanding of um yesterday. I know I didn't put out a review. I was just so dead tired. Um and you know my heart just wouldn't have been in it if I would have just put out a review. Um if I would have just put out the video. I, I just yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to put out something that I don't feel is going to just be, it's going to be good just for the sake of doing it. So I want to thank everyone for their patience. Um, hell, even getting through the last two reviews yesterday were, um, was a bit of a struggle. So thank you. I did get a chance to watch a little bit yesterday, um, this morning. I don't know. I may want to finishing it, depending on how the rest of my day goes. I'm going to be honest, Victoria was, uh, <laughs> from the start, this Ice Princess was annoying the living hell out of me. So, like, I was like, you know what? Let me just take a beat. Let me watch the other soap operas today, because I have a feeling that that woman is going to put me in a bad mood, and um, it is way too early in the morning to start off with bad mood. Now, going into this episode. Um I I'm gonna be honest, I I don't really have a lot of patience with Ali. Listen, I'm trying with this storyline, I'm trying to play a bit of devil's advocate. I'm trying to sit there and see both sides of it. You know, she lost her dad. She's kind of lost right now. I'm also sitting there saying this like my goodness, I don't know, this woman is just annoying the living hell out of me. Like when Jack called up and was like, hey, you know, I'm going to be in town for a couple, you know, for a couple of days and want to know if we can get some coffee. And she was like, well, you know, I didn't think we were going to sit there and talk that fast. And I, I just, I really don't know. And I'm like, what do you know? Now, granted, I know that I'm coming across as a dick. Okay. I get that. She just lost her dad. Dad meant everything to her. So on, on that note, I understand that she's kind of dealing with a lot and doesn't really know she can handle everything, you know, handle being in, in, in his life. And on the other hand, it's like, you know, he lost his son, you know, and if she was to then take five seconds to sit there and get out of her little bubble, then maybe she can understand some of the pain that he's going through. And granted, I get it. She did sit there and say, you know, one day we can sit there and do that. But, you know, it's not like the dude is staying in town. He just asked to sit there and see her for some coffee and a little bit of conversation before he goes back and you can continue on with whatever existence that you were sitting there living before. So I don't think it was a huge tall order. So when she acted like that, it was like, ugh. And then it made him feel bad. It's like, it just annoyed the living hell out of me. I, I just, I don't really have a lot of patience with this storyline and I know it's working for some people and I respect that. But for me personally, um, no, no, obviously not. Now, the person that she was meant to talking to was some woman named Taylor. I don't know if that's a real name or not. I know that I know that she was on soap operas for a while. I don't know if she was on Days of Our Lives or was she on. No, I know she was on Young and Restless. I don't know if she ever did Days of Our Lives. I only remember her from two shows. One of them being called The Vampire Diaries, which I love to this day, and the other one being called Team Wolf. Um, outside of that, I don't really know that much about her, but interesting little side note. There's a customer that comes to my job almost like every couple weeks and she looks like she could be her sister. Like it is insane. I just didn't know. Her, I didn't know this actress name, so I can never really sit there and be like, hey, you look like so-and-so. Um, so anyway, this woman clearly has alternative motives. Alternative motives. Um, is the one that's behind, you know, texting Jack and all this other stuff. I guess she got some sort of history from what the flashbacks it looked like. She has history with Jack and Phyllis and... Oh, that other stuff. I mean, I saw a clip of her acting like she got ran over. 
<laughs> I mean, Grant, I know it's supposed to be a serious scene, but looking at when they do it, it just comes across like, is this a prank? Because this looks like it's a prank, right? Are you serious? Wow, okay. Long story short, she does convince Allie to give um, Jack another chance as far as spending time with him and everything like that. She goes into this whole sob story about regret and forgiveness and, you know, time is short and everything. And don't get me wrong, she is actually right about all that. Um, but yeah, you know, she encouraged her to spend more time with Jack. M meanwhile, she's texting Jack and just saying, oh, I'm working on Allie from my end. Now, Phyllis is just annoyed with this whole thing. She's annoyed with this whole thing. She's like, yeah, listen, I want to sit there and track this one. But Jack is like, you know, at this point, any sort of help, anything I can get, it's going to work for me. So for right now, I'm going to let her keep, and I'm going to let her stay behind the shadows as she feels comfortable as long as she's helping me out, whatever. For now. So Phyllis agrees to drop it. They go to dinner, and, um, you know, Jack, like, I don't know if I said this, Jack gets the call from Mally saying that she can meet her and, you know, have coffee and everything like that. So... Now, granted, I didn't finish watching yesterday's episode, so I don't know how to conclude it. Like, did Victoria finally see the light? Or is she just going to be, you know, ignorant and stupid like she has been for quite a while? Um, and I want to sit there and see how the Loch Ness Monster... I can't believe I'm calling him the Loch Ness, not the Loch Ness Monster. I was, how he's going to sit there and get out of this? I felt like maybe yesterday might have been a better episode. Um... Then says episode, because hey, he didn't really offer a lot of anything. I mean, Nate agrees to work with the family as far as um, Davon and Lily going to be um, Dave, Davon's CEO. Um, they have a really, they have a just bad blood between them. A subscriber was to telling me that they want to get into a fight, Davon and Nate want to get into a fight, and it caused some sort of nerve, nerve damage. Um, with Nate and, you know, which is the reason why he can't sit down and perform, perform surgery anymore. And I'm going to be honest, I mean, I know that, you know, for the sake of the storyline and everything like that, they moving forward and they're going to put the past and the past and I'm pretty sure Nate has probably screwed him over, I imagine, at some point, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know if that's something that you can just sit there and, and forget. And I always admire people that can do that, that can sit there and, and, and forgive. And I know sometimes they sit there and say, well, I'm not going to forgive them for 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 them. I'm going to sit there and do it for myself. But you're still forgiving them. And I just don't know how that sit. That just doesn't sit right. There's certain things. Uh, I mean, I know that I have been known for holding grudges, but some of those grudges... Well, I'm not going to get into that, but certain things, um, I feel like may be kind of worth holding on to. At least in my opinion. So yeah, he agrees to work with them and, you know, Nate, I mean, uh, Lena comes back and because Nate was with Chelsea and he's going to be moving back into his place or into his place that Neil gave him that he turned down or whatever and um he agreed to move back there and um I guess you know him and Chelsea are, are cool now and you know she's made amends and he's forgiven her and realized that she's a better person at the all the crap that she's done which I wish I could have seen I, know, I mean granted if you sit there and look at every soap opera Everyone gets it and say, you know, it was so much better back in 2010 and back in the early 2000s and the 90s and stuff like that. To some extent, I feel like that is true. I feel like that is true. I don't know if it's just the lack of material that they are giving or putting out or if they feel like they don't really have anything new to offer. You know, a lot of times with, with some of these soap operas, they will go back to roots. 
And if they felt like something worked the first time, I'd worked a couple of times, they'll sit there and do it again. They'll hit back on what they already did. You look at the possession storyline with um Days, you look at the back and forth rift between Ridge, Taylor, and Brooke. It might have worked back in the day and they feel like we gotta sit there and rehash it. Um I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I can't and the thing is I can't sit there and and knock people who complain about how it used to be back in the day, how it was better back in the day. Cause you know, I even sit there and look at General Hospital and I'm like, you know, this was good, but back in those times, it was it was pretty amazing. But then I think was it amazing because it was just great storytelling or was it amazing because I was new and it was just a different world and also being a guy who was also taboo so you know who knows oh yeah and Billy was not there whining about how he doesn't know if he can do a second podcast that the numbers came out and they were good and it was positive for the most part but he feels like he may have writer's block and our creator's block I guess um he doesn't know if he can sit there and do enough. He doesn't know if he has any more material. But Lily encourages him, and I don't know where it goes because I'm going to be honest. I was looking at my phone at that point, so um, I'm sure they had a good talk. Well, before the whole meeting started. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just sitting there looking at the um, my notes of Elaine. Elena, I think, the actress that plays her. And I, I look at that, and I feel like, here's the thing. I know some people will sit there and kind of look at the Elaine character and be like, or Elena character and be like, you know, she's not really doing that much or whatever. And she might actually have a better storyline back in the day. But I feel like even in this show, even though she's not always at the forefront and she's not always like, you know, doing stuff that I've seen recently, I feel like she's still used more better than she was when she just like when she came in there, like it just didn't really matter. Nothing that she did really mattered. Like the character just didn't really mean anything and they just kind of wrote off the character and it was like it's like what are you doing with her? So when I found out that she was on Y and R, I was happy. Because even though I was watching Y&R back, you know, back then, I was still like, you know what? I'm pretty sure whatever they're going to do with her is a hell of a lot better than what the hell they're doing with, than what the hell they did with her on GH. Just double check, because I feel like there was more, but I also feel like there really wasn't a lot of anything. We were just the size of the cast. That makes it seem like it was a lot. I feel like that's about it. Um, I wasn't going to say this was a good episode. Um, the way that they tell the stories in this show obviously moves a lot different than other things. At least this Jack storyline has actually gone somewhere. I mean, like I said, in the beginning, it was like, I would have had more fun watching paint dry. I really would have had more fun watching paint dry. But at least now we're getting something where we're getting Ali, we're getting this mystery woman, whoever she is. Um, so it seems like it's, it's starting to go somewhere. Um, so it's enough to sit there and keep me intrigued. I mean, it's not, oh my goodness, this is going to be so amazing. But it's like now we have a face to the person behind the taxes. Um, and she's somebody who has been on the show before and who's had history with Jack and Phyllis and stuff like that. So I am definitely intrigued, um, especially from a new fan's perspective. I am definitely intrigued. Not super amazing, but it's a lot more interesting than it was two weeks ago. So we're getting some of that. With that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what you throw down in the comment section below. See you in the next video.